Okay, Joshua chapter 7 tonight. Good. Good singing, good song choices again. We'll get better as we go along, I hope. All right. <clears throat> Last week, chapter 6, verses... Chapter 6, verse 11 to 27... We uh, saw them moving into Jericho and the walls come tumbling down. So we call it the overthrow of Jericho. Uh, last week, we pick up in chapter 7 after this. But last week, we had five things that we saw from verse 11 to 27 in Joshua. First, we saw the compassing of Jericho, where they compassed around the city the first time second time and then we saw also that was a warning we'll pick up tonight the cursing of jericho secondly so 11 to 16 was the compassing around the city and then secondly we said the cursing of jericho was a, verse 17 to 19 was the cursing of jericho and then we saw the conquering of jericho's walls coming tumbling down verse 20 and 21 the conquering of Jericho and then we saw the compassion of Jericho on Rahab and her family which is verse 22 to 25 the compassion that uh, Joshua said we, we must keep our word when we say we're going to do something we must do that amen that's why America's so messed up everybody's lying to each other uh, we signed contracts we don't keep and the advertisers uh, give us advertisements with a slick tiny print at the bottom which entraps you into signing the contract so we live in this deceitful world so the compassion was shown for her and she of course was in the line of uh, Jesus Christ being born God stuck her right there in the, the, the family tree then the last was the curse on the men at Jericho. If anybody dared to try to put this back together in his lifetime, that, that lifetime, uh, they would uh, have a curse upon them. We studied what happened 500 years later when God allowed Jericho to be rebuilt. And uh, so we closed in verse number 27. And we'll pick up 627 right now where it says, So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was noised throughout all the country. So now we see Joshua with this powerful army, this which really God did the work, remember? He said, you just walk around and then do a shout on the last trip around. I'll take he said, I will give you the victory. And so we see the Lord was with Joshua and we leave him with this outstanding reputation of a man of God. Now things change in chapter 7 and uh, here we're going to talk about the cursed life because we saw, and we'll pick up in verse uh, 6, chapter 6, verse 18 and 19 and we'll see several things here. So Lord we ask you to prepare us to go out into the world and do thy work and uh, trust completely in you and do everything you say the way you said to do it. May our motives be right and our methods be right as well. So we pray now that we grow in wisdom and bless the recording of others that are able to watch and glean from the Word of God tonight. Things that will make us stronger and better. Give us a burden for the lost. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so now we see five things here tonight in these uh, first 12 verses. It's kind of loaded. So we're talking about the cursed life. Now there's a lot of cursing going on. And uh, the doctrine of the curses is mentioned many times in the Bible. Uh, curse, cursed, curseth, cursing. Uh, many, many times the Bible uses that word. But as we finish up, we'll mention more about that between the Old Testament and the New Testament. 
So first we see in 6, 18, and 19, the warning of a curse. The warning of a curse, as we heard last week, he said, now, there's rules to this when we go into Jericho. And uh, what he's saying is, uh, don't take God's stuff, is what he's telling them. Watch this. And ye, 618, and ye in any wise, it means any way, don't do this. In any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves accursed. When you take of the accursed thing, should it surprise us that people that drink alcohol become alcoholics <laughs> and die young and lose their health? Or, or tobacco or even marijuana, they don't know the results of smoking pot for over a long period of time as a national habit. But it, the Bible will keep us from the accursed thing, the thing that shortens our life and others, lest you make yourselves accursed. When you take of the accursed thing, so we see it three times, and make the camp of Israel accursed four times, and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord, they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So we see the warning of a curse. Now, what he's saying is don't take God's stuff. Do not steal from God. Amen. What did the devil try to do with Eve? To take that tree, just that one thing that belonged to God. The devil says, well, God's selfish. That's why he doesn't want you to have that. You take it anyway. And of course, now we're all in a sinful boat together and the curse is upon the land until... Revelation 22, 3 says, and there was no more curse, but that's eternity, okay? That's the end of the great white throne judgment. So turn to Malachi 3, 7 to 9, because that, we know that verse, but others may not know that verse that are living a life that is cursed, even in the New, New Testament age. So 3, verse 7 of Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, we see here this warning. So it says here in 3, 7, and God's dealing with Israel, and uh, God says, Even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from mine ordinances, have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Playing dumb, like, oh, uh, we don't know, uh, just because just you say it's wrong don't mean we see it as wrong. Well, look at eight. Don't touch God's stuff. Don't take it. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. What an accusation. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? The answer is what? In tithes and offerings. Bring you all that. What does it say? Ties into the storehouse and see if I won't bless you, Jesus said in Matthew 23. And uh, so we have a warning. So the warning is simply don't take God's stuff. Now, let's go back to the story. Secondly, we see, picking up in 7, verse 1. So first, we have the warning of a curse. And then we have the commitment of sin to cause the curse in 7, verse 1. The commit, the commit, he committed this sin, Achan did, but the children of Israel committed a trespass. Now look who's getting the blame. All of them. But did all of them take from God? No. But guess what? Uh, what they call it, guilt by association? Somebody in the camp has done this. Children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, they want you to know who this guy is, going down three grandfathers down here, you might say. And uh, the tribe of Judah took the accursed thing, I think we've seen that word six times, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. 
So the commitment of sin to cause the curse, the warning of a curse. Now, think about this. They're getting a brand new start in a promised land. They're getting a new, pure start and victory all the way. Remember Gilgal, remember Jericho, and now they're going to mess around with a little town called Ai. That's what it's spelled, Ai. But think about the New Testament. We got a new start with the, the uh, church age, and uh, everything was going great guns and blessings and miracles, and then somebody named Ananias decided to take God's stuff. You see how, how tragic this is. All right, Eve did it, Achan did it, Ananias and Sapphira did it, and that's why we must get this down. This stuff is supposed to be consecrated to the work of God. Amen. It wasn't to go in Achan's hip pocket and then buy some uh, fun and games, or even for his kids as an inheritance. And did not Ananias hear about it from Peter? Have, 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 have you applied to the Holy Ghost? Because they had already made it a choice and told God they were willing to give you whatever. Now be careful about that because you might go to sell something and it sells for a lot more than you thought it would, and, and you only give part of it to the Lord. And we said, I'm going to sell this, give it all to the Lord's work. It can happen today that we back, we back up on our word and lie to the Holy Ghost. So we have the commitment of sin to cause the curse. So a pure new start ruined by individuals, Eve, Achan, Ananias, and, and Sapphira. Now, Look at verse uh, 7, verse 2 and 3. Uh, thirdly, we see the beginning of the curse. Now, Joshua does not have a clue what's going on, but the curse has begun behind his back. That happens in churches and businesses and governments where something's going on in the background and the leader is almost like the last one to find out before it's almost too late to stop it. And so we have here, verse 2 and 3, the beginning of the curse. 7 2. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth, Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel, spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. Well, we have here, the curse is now uh, begun. And so sometimes we may, we may not see it coming until it's already there. And that's what we have here. So they said, just send a few people over there. And so let's go on down to verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 4 and 5a. So we've had the warning of a curse in 6, verse 18 and 19. We've had the commitment of sin to cause the curse, 7 and 1, 7, verse 1. And the beginning of the curse in 7, verse 2 and 3. Now here we'll slow down a little bit. The evidences of the curse. Now, there's at least five evidences here that there's something bad wrong. That's a double negative, but this, when bad goes wrong, it's bad wrong. And the evidence of the curse found in 7, 4 to 5a. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. Something's wrong. The men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, killed thirty six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted, became as water. So uh, 
I think I wanted to stop at 5A there. And uh, yeah, where it says going down, where it share them and smoke them in the going down where I need to stop. So we have these evidences here of something is wrong. Where's our, where's our victory this time? Uh, who done it? Well, let's go back and see. So the evidences of a curse can be uh, one here out of this fourth point, a defeated life. Seven verse four and five a we just read that. But look at the defeated life they have that we just read. And so, so they went up three thousand men. The men of Ai smote of them thirty six men, and they chased them before the gate even to Shabaram. Shabaram smote them going down. So we have this defeated life. So we want to have our antennas up and uh, make sure that we're doing what God has told us to do in His Word. And so sometimes Christians get to the place where they say, nothing seems to be working out. Nothing seems to be working out. Well, that's a good signal. Start Paul said, examine ourselves whether we be in the faith now in Corinthians. Remember that? And let's, you know, make sure you're in the faith and then make sure you're faithful to the faith. Amen. And so we have a defeated life is an evidence of a curse of some sort. And then verse 5b, we left off to verse 6, tells us uh, about a weak and fearful life. So we have a defeated life. Secondly, we see here a weak and fearful life. And picking up in 5, 5b there, the last sentence. It says, Wherefore the hearts of the people did what? Melted. Became as water. This is a hopeless situation here. They've been defeated, but now they've become weak and fearful. Hopeless. What's, if we can't whoop them what will we do? They're just a tiny bunch of people. How do they do this with 3,000 warriors? Look at verse, uh, verse 6. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord till the evening even tide, he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. So they're really worked up here. They're really beat down. So, oh man, we're defeated and we're weak like water and fearful. Thirdly, we see here in verse 7a, also the cursed life can not only be defeated life and weak and fearful, but it can be a doubting and blaming life. This is where you really don't want to get to do this, uh, us or anybody else for that matter, 7a. Joshua said, alas, you just see him breathing out deeply, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou, or doubting and blaming is coming up here, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou, now who's getting the blame here? Wait a minute, who's getting the blame? You know any Christians that throw blame on God for their troubles? Amen, I do. I know lots of them, especially preachers. O oh Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan? 7a. So the doubting, blaming life. Uh, there's number four here. Look at 7b. That is a backslider and a quitter's life. It gets even worse. You go down, 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 like Jonah went down, down, down. And uh, we see 7b goes on. And so, Lord blames God trying to and questioning God to deliver us out of the hand of the Amorites to destroy us and then he picks up here in a backslidden and quitter's life would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan wish we had now Moses never said let's go back to Egypt but Joshua had heard that as a young man Remember all those enemies of Moses? Let's go back. Wish we was in Egypt with the lentils and all the other 
junk food. But he says here, he's talking about backsliding and going backwards and, and quitting on God. Would to God, it's almost like a, a request and prayer that we don't want to go forward anymore. Would to God we had been content in worldliness, see? That's what he's talking about. Better if we were worldly. How many worldly Christians do you know that think we're wrong because we don't want to go back? We want to go forward. We want to see souls saved. We want to see people living a holy life so there will be a difference between the clean and the unclean on this earth. Amen. Without separation, there, there can be no identification. Suppose you went into a grocery store and you had a whole row on both sides of canned goods with no labels on them. You go to the next aisle and you have all these boxes of stuff and uh, containers and there's no labels on them. Where's the distinction? Suppose you had uh, paper money in your pocket that had no numbers on it. I'd, I'd pull that on a guy when I was first saved because he said uh, something about the Bible is just a bunch of words. They, they don't mean nothing. I said, well, when they bring your paycheck here this afternoon, I said, you just give it to me. I said, I know what to do with that piece of paper. <laughs> and he cussed me out. You know? I got a lot, took a lot of cussing uh, when I first got saved in heavy construction work. But I didn't care. I don't know, I have some funny stories about that, but not tonight. So, backslidden and quitter's life. I'm going to give it up. And then, in their van, sinner's vanity, the backslider, quitter, doubter, blamer, weak, fearful, and defeated life. We have a self-centeredness here, the embarrassing life in verse 8 and 9. Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? What will people say? What will people think? How can I get out of this? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, shall environ and surround us, round and cut off our name from the earth. What will thou do unto thy great name? Now we understand he doesn't know what he's into. He doesn't know that there's a curse on his entire population because of one person. But so we have this evidence of the cursed life of defeat, weakness, fear, doubting, blaming, backsliding, quitting, and worried about what others will think uh, in the process, verse 8 and 9. Well, we've seen all the negative stuff. Now, when God speaks, we better listen. Amen. Amen. When God speaks, we better listen. Verse 10 through 12, we have the cure for the curse. There's a cure for the curse. And he's mouthed off to God ignorantly, ignorantly, and he really doesn't know what's going on. We, we can give him some mercy on that, can't we? I mean, if we were in his shoes, we wouldn't know what's going on because we didn't know Achan did it. We'll find out next week when he's, when he's executed. But the cure for the curse is found in 10 to 12. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Now mark those the next three words. What are they? Get thee up. Quit moping. Quit excusing. Quit slacking up. I told you what to do. Now let's get it. Let's get her done. Now that's what leadership is. When things go wrong, you still get up and go forward. Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Get up. Israel has sinned and have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. They have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen, 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 and disassembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. So disassembled is also like a, a dividing, a, you know, you could cause a division. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before, he says, now, Joshua, here's the answer to your prayer. Here's the reason. Children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs 
before their enemies because they were accursed. So we've seen that word how many times? Eight or nine times. Neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed from among you. And then we'll finish that chapter next week. But the cure is get up and go to work and I will tell you what's going on. That's why we do need to be in the Bible and in prayer so God can speak to us and show us things and cause circumstances during the day to work out. And so when things are like the commitment of sin, the beginning of the curse, the evidences of the curse, when things are like that, we wonder what is going on. Well, guess what? It can be uh, us when we start searching for the source. It may be us or those that we frequent with. Achan was frequenting with the rest of Israel. And the Christians that seem to be good sometimes are not so good to see. So get thee up, he says. Search for the source. It may be us in our personal life or those that we frequent with. That are, that's what I'm, uh, I always tell people. When you have a troubled person you're working with and they refuse to go God's way, you need to distance yourself quick because when their life explodes, you don't want to get part of that shrapnel into your life. Right. When God causes that, that Christian to come unglued finally, show who they really are, what they have done. We've had members here that have been people on dope. We've had people here that were child molesters walking among us, and separated Christians. Some committed suicide. Some went to jail, prison. But they all loved Jesus, loved the King James Bible, and all looked holier than thou. And I'm sure Aiken looked the part. He just somehow did what God said don't do. The last of the Ten Commandments is what? Thou shalt not covet anything because it belongs to God. So search for the source. It may be us or those we frequent with. It may be a nice, seemingly good Christian who is not so good after all. So think about, now what I want to say is the Old Testament has Almost all the words of the word curse are in the Old Testament. We don't have the word curse used in the New Testament at all, except bless those who curse you, right? And, but you don't have it. He's, Jesus said, he that curses his mother or father is used, but it's not used as you're, gonna, you're cursed. Because Jesus became a curse for us in Galatians chapter 3, who became a curse for us. And the end of the Revelation, of course, 22 3 says, and there was no more curse. But we have a word that takes the place of curse, and it's called chastisement. Because if you look at this, they're being chastised, are they not? But the curse is on the whole nation not just on one person. So God just chastises us individually, not for what somebody else is doing. Amen? Amen. Because Ezekiel 18, 18 tells us all souls are mine, and the son's not to take the beating for the father when he sins, and the father's not to take the beating for the son that sins. Everybody's on their own. Ezekiel came many moons later, you understand. Now turn to Proverbs 28, 13. So we do have chapter 12 of Hebrews that talks about the chastening hand of God. So we can ask if somebody's influencing us to, to, to let them get by with what they're getting by with. And uh, Proverbs 28, that's what I want to see here. And we'll be done in just a moment. Proverbs 28, 13. Let's read it together. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them 
shall have mercy. Isn't that a good verse? Yeah, if you're serving God, it's a good verse. If you're not, it's a, it's a whooping coming, right? Read it again. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So we can confess our sins, and uh, but if we're not actively forsaking them, it may be a battle. I know all the tobacco and, and dope and alcohol. I know what a hang up I had as a young sinner at, at 25, 24, 23, 18, 19, and military and all that stuff. What a struggle it was but I got the victory over every, every one of them because I, I kept confessing it's sin, it's wrong. Some people will say, well, I know it's wrong, but one guy told me the other day, down the street here, he said, well, I got some habits, I, you know, I like to drink coffee and I like my cigarettes, and that's just the way it is. And he, he's a member of High Street, but he hadn't been since he was a kid. And he works uh, in, in a convenience store but he, he has no intention of letting God cleanse him of that because I like this. I like this. And if he's born again, the chastening hand of God will soon teach him a lesson one way or the other. Yeah. Like, he may not die quickly. He may suffer years from lung cancer or heart disease or lung, you know, just complications, emphysema. Have a long, hard chastising hand and you can't heal from that once you let it get that bad. So we see here Malachi 3.10 so let's pick up where we left off there Malachi that will be done. So the first part of that verse Malachi 7 3.7-9 is a warning not to take God's stuff not to steal God's stuff if a person can't tithe, why don't they start at what percent they can tithe? Some people say, I can't do 10%, so I don't even do anything. Well, what about 1%? How about a penny on the dollar? Wouldn't it be nice to see somebody that's never given to God what God asked for to come up and at least drop a penny? I made a dollar that week. There's a penny. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Until you got to bless that penny, then you can give two, then three, then ten, a hundred, then a thousand, then a million. I mean, that's just doing what God said to do and showing how I'm confessing my wrong and I'm forsaking my wrong and help me do right. Help me catch up with it. And uh, so we have here Malachi 3, verse 9. Where he says, you're cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Then he gives us the way out. That's like we saw with Joshua, the way out. Get thou up. Now, so first he says in 310 of Malachi, and if you're living in that camera right now, you get this. We don't know how far this could travel, right? It may do somebody a lot of good. That's under the chastening hand of God. Bring ye... Some bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Why? That there may be meat in my house, enough to do the work of God. Prove me now, not later, now herewith saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven. How many know that song? The windows of heaven are open. Da, 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 da. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything. Remember that song, anybody? Well, we'll teach it to you someday. And I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, like my garage. <laughs> Dagwood Bumstead's closet. Remember that cartoon? Open the closet and everything fell on top of it. It's much stuff packed in there. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. I will take care of the devil. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. 
Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, or blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. And that's what's wrong with America. They have taken God's stuff. And God's taking it back. I gave you America so the gospel, gospel, gospel could be preached all over the earth for hundreds and hundreds of years. And now COVID says no more missionaries, no more crossing government lines, no more going to Canada. We haven't been able to cross that border for months now. And uh, they just relaxed yesterday that for a Canadian who visits America can come back if they can prove that they don't have COVID uh, through tests from America. I mean, it's they shut the doors all over the earth right now because of what the devil has done. And so it says here that bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. And if we, if we fail in these things that we've studied tonight, we must stop, confess it, forsake the wrong way, and ask God for help to go the right way, which is always forward and upward. Amen. Always forward and always upward. Climb into higher ground. So the cursed life is nothing that we want to be involved in. And uh, we can't be under this curse of the Old Testament, but we are under the chastening of the Lord or the blessing of the Lord, one of the two. And isn't it something, but that's our choice if we want a chastisement or if we want a blessing it is our choice God's already told us make your choice and I will act accordingly if you want to hand a discipline on you all the time and no freedom God said I can do that yeah. uh, that's why I said there's so many Christians in jail here in town and all across the prisons of, not one of them's in there for persecution they're in there because they're the chastising hand of God on that born again believer so Lord, we ask you now to, to help us move further in our services and our prayer time. We thank you for your many blessings and help us not to take your stuff, but to use your stuff like you would use your stuff to win the world of Christ now. Thank you that Christ is the end of the law for all who believe and that he became a curse for us so we could go to heaven. So we pray that somebody be saved. We're watching our study now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, take your prayer sheets. And uh, Brother Sal, do you want to help with that or do you want me to go ahead? I'll go ahead. Okay. So get your prayer sheets and your requests. I'll turn the camera off.